Hi, this is Mark from HondaAlgeSolutions.com, and today I want to talk about five myths that are involved with algae control in ponds. Now, everybody has an opinion on what will work and what won't work with regards to keeping algae uh, under control in a pond or water garden. And uh, I want to talk about some of those things that people sort of get misdirected on or misguided on originally. So, number one, myth number one, aeration controls algae. That is actually not quite true. There are cases where if you put an aeration package in a pond, uh, if existing natural bacteria, uh, the natural cleansing beneficial bacteria that would normally be found in a pond, if that is present but dormant uh, to some degree, adding aeration, adding increased oxygen will most definitely improve the condition of the pond. However, if a pond has been treated chemically, particularly with a copper algicide, for example, much of that bacteria may be killed off. If it's been depleted or lowered, then aeration, uh, putting aeration in a pond may not help directly with an algae problem and some bacteria supplementation may be necessary. But I can tell you this, aeration is a great first step in almost every case to improve the overall condition of any pond. And when it's combined with beneficial bacteria, you tend to get an increased uh, cleaning and restoring of a pond's condition, including a regression of algae growth. Uh, myth number two, uh, algicides, chemical algicides are the best way to control algae. Actually, this has been a prevalent myth, I think, for a long time. Uh, if we go back 20, 30 years, of course, there wasn't uh, such widespread use of other natural remedies. Uh, barley straw uh, has been used for a long, long time. But the problem with all of these treatments in one sense, chemically speaking, is that you're actually treating a symptom. Algae is a symptom of an underlying problem of high nutrients uh, in the water that comes from some source. Maybe it's organic material uh, and organic loading in the pond. It could be from nutrient rich runoff or source water. But in any case, when you only treat a symptom of a problem, you're bound to get the symptom back once the treatment stops. Many algicides start to lose their effectiveness over time. Also, a lot of algicides, copper sulfate, uh, cutrine, uh, a number of other uh, products that use uh, these metals uh, actually can create toxicity in the pond or lake or reservoir. And so ultimately, in the long term, uh, a chemical algicide is never your best option. They may be used from time to time, but in my opinion, they should be used as a last resort, not a frontline defense. So. Uh, they are not your best option for your pond or for algae control in general. Short-term quick fix, maybe so, but that's the extent of it in my opinion. Uh, fish. Fish eat algae and will keep it under control. Sometimes they can help, but if we're talking about uh, large ponds and uh, grass carp, for example, grass carp uh, can tend to help with certain types of aquatic vegetation. A lot of times algae is not one of them. They can be particular in what they like to eat. Uh, there are certain weeds that they can do a tremendous job at controlling. Other ones, they won't help much at all. And so um, I would not necessarily stock a pond with grass carp with the expectation that they're always going to control an algae problem, particularly if it's growing rapidly. They may not be able to keep up with it. Again, it goes back to some underlying conditions that need to be addressed first before you look at controls. Um, Myth number four, we'll get to number four. Ultrasound is the silver bullet of algae control. A lot of uh, talk and awareness is, is growing uh, for the use of ultrasound and ultrasonic equipment in terms of algae control. And it is a good tool. We use it quite often. But it comes with a couple of stipulations. First of all, it's very dependent on the algae species, not just the type, but the species of algae that you have in the pond. Uh, some are physically resistant to it. Their cell structure simply cannot be damaged in the same way that most algae can be, and so they will be resistant to it. And although many large ponds and even small ponds contain a variety of algae species, let's say you were to control three out of five uh, that are found in a particular pond, you still may see algae in, with the naked eye. It may not look like much has been accomplished, and yet you've knocked out three of the most problematic species. And so. Uh, many times, uh, ultrasound can improve the, the algae condition in a pond, but uh, it should not always be looked at as a complete control. Sometimes it is, but most of the time, it's best to look at ultrasound as a 
component of an overall program. You might look to combine uh, ultrasound with bacteria, again, to work on organic loading and nutrient uh, reduction. You might combine it with aeration to pr improve circulation and organic decomposition and all that. And so it's, it's one important tool. It's a useful tool, but it may not be the end-all tool for algae control in some ponds. Also, we found that in very shallow ponds, uh, although it can control string algae at times, and again, it goes back to the species, there are some uh, green water type algae, some planktonic algae that in, s in shallow water it may have a challenge with. Uh, it may disable the algae, but it may not totally kill it, and thereby it still gets support from sunlight penetration and those kind of things. So ultrasound's good, but keep in mind that it may not be a perfect tool. Uh, myth number five, salt controls algae. Uh, this is something that people have tried and some have used effectively. There are some species of algae that can, can uh, be controlled by increasing the salt concentration in a pond. And we would generally use this in a small body of water, in a water garden pond. Uh, you can use salt for therapeutic purposes for your fish, um, but for algae control, one dosage recommendation would be around one pound per 100 gallons of water. That's 0.1 percent concentration. Now that's still relatively low. It sounds like a lot, but it is relatively low. For therapeutic doses to help with uh, parasites, you might use uh, three pounds per 100 gallons or a 0.3 percent uh, concentration. So, you know, 0.1 percent is relatively low, but don't expect it to control algae in every case because some algae are very uh, capable of withstanding high salinity. Uh, there's a saltwater form of algae that you know, many forms of algae that can live in salt water, so y you couldn't take it high enough to affect some of the algaes that may be present in the pond. So, again, it may be worth it for some things, but most algae probably won't be affected. And I want to finally leave you actually with a bonus, uh, myth number six. I, I promise five, but I'll give you six. UV works on all types of algae. This is something we get a lot. Um, many of the claims, the marketing claims on UV is that it will control algae. That's the term that's used. It doesn't talk specifically about what it does. The key is to remember that UV will only control green water and planktonic algae, single cell algae. The algae must be able to pass through the tube that the light is in to be affected. Uh, string algae will not be affected whatsoever uh, for the most part. Uh, and so it is only good for specific instances. Again, uh, you also are best to combine it with a good quality biofilter so that the damaged algae and the algae that's killed can be taken out of the system effectively through filter, filtration uh, and, and then you'll get a better performance with UV. So I hope that helps clarify a few things in terms of algae control, some things you may read or hear about and say, hmm, I wonder if that's going to help. Well, that's the nuts and bolts of some of the top myths regarding algae control uh, products and processes. If you have any other questions about your pond or controlling algae in it, please feel free to contact us at pondalgesolutions.com anytime and we'll try to help. Hope you enjoyed this pond tip and have a great day wherever you are.